Welcome to today's video. Now, something I quite like to do, during, especially during the winter months, is to have at least two electronics projects on the go. The one that I've got on the go at the moment is the F1 project. The other one which I'm going to start is this one. This is a Hitachi V8600. It claimed to be the first third generation VCR. It is a Betamax VCR. There is a tape in there because it will accept a tape and attempt to play it. Uh, it will try to unlace the tape but because the belts are probably goo it's not allowing me to take the tape out so I've left it in there for the minute and we'll obviously remove it uh, once I've got all the belts sorted out. So recently I did boil up some belts um, in the context of this video that was yesterday for me but maybe in the last video for you guys and the first thing i want to do is to get this open and have a look inside of it as so i've never had a look inside of one of these before except in um, videos and there is a very interesting feature about this machine that makes it unique uh, certainly unique amongst consumer decks of this era so here we are with the lid off of the VCR and if I zoom in and focus on the head drum assembly this is the one thing that makes this deck very special especially for this era because we have one, two, three, four video heads now why do we have Four video heads, you may be wondering. Well, that is the main feature of this machine. It is a four head VCR. So it has four heads in total. Two of the heads are used for normal playback. The other two heads come into play when you are using the deck for what you would class as trick functions. So pause, slow motion, uh, sort of fast forward search or on this one I think it is yeah fast forward search and other functions that would require or would certainly benefit from having all of those heads uh, processing the picture or rather reading off the tape now I'm not sure if this is just a trait of this machine but the moment I don't seem to be able to rotate that head drum so I was oh yeah that is really stiff oh, so I wonder if I've got um, some problems actually underneath or if I have a failed motor because I'll be honest with you I am not sure what type of um, setup this actually has mm -hmm. for rotating things like the head drum so let's turn it over gently does it and let's get the base off so somebody's been in this unit before because there's a screw missing from there so it will be interesting to see what we have underneath but the first challenge is to get the actual head disc rotating because unlike the uh, Sony C5 and C7 this uses a head disc although they technically use a head disc but it uses a head disc that's similar uh, to the head disc employed in the um, in the Sanyo decks so like a Sony C5 and C7 you have this large board underneath here which hinges at the rear and it appears to be held in possibly held in at the front so there's a screw which holds this front panel in place so I'm going to remove that screw The same with the screw on the other side. There 
there we go and that will probably loosen off that front panel does that have any inkling of moving at all well interesting that slides does that actually slide back that's weird it's like on a sort of a slide mechanism so it's almost like the whole board slides back and there's a screw here but there's one missing there so if I undo this screw here that to one side. The board shifts back like so, then that will lift, I can make sure it's back completely, there's a couple of, t oh yeah there's a little switch there so that comes out and that lifts to reveal Yep, that reveals the selection of belts. In fact, all the belts actually appear to be intact, apart from uh, this one on the capstone, it was a bit sticky. So that will lift and expose all of the inside of the unit. So I'm just going to gently pop that down a sec and turn this around so that you can see it. There we go. So that is the inside. That's the underneath. We've got this belt here. So it looks like, looking at the residue on here, typical gooey residue, residue that would have linked onto here. This head motor, this is very similar to the um, C5 and C7 because it uses a very similar head motor to drive this central pulley. There's a lower pulley here which will attach to this one, which I think will be driving the idlers. Yeah, judging by the way it will go to there or there, that's probably driving our idlers. This is going to be capstan, that's obviously in need of replacement, so we'll need to get that replaced. But the first thing is to work out why that is rubbing. And to do that, I'm going to put this board back down, push it back, and to keep it in place, push it forward, so you can use these tabs on the side to push it forward and lock it into place. Now because we have Certainly on the other side, we seem to have a similar setup to Sanyo decks. I'm going to first off remove this upper head drum, get this out of the way. And from what I can tell, there's obviously these two which hold the bracket to the actual head drum itself. This, I would guess, is a moisture sensor. These, I would guess, hold the drum in place. If I move that out of the way, we have the head disc, and the head disc is still stiff. The heads themselves, I think they're okay. So, it would suggest to me that the stiffness is actually coming from the motor assembly on the base. But if I zoom it in, you will be able to see in more detail that head disc there. And it's quite an interesting looking setup. So because that actually appears to be okay, what I'm going to do is to put the upper head assembly back. So it doesn't matter if I get my fingers onto it, because this all needs a thoroughly, thoroughly good clean. But what I will do is put this back into place. And there's only one way it can actually go on, which is good. There's no 
accentuation that I need to take into account. It's almost like a one size fits all, which is handy. Oh, something else this machine has. Um, it is, from what I can tell from those audio heads, um, it is mono, but it has a facility called BNR. And BNR stands for beta, or uh, don't worry, there's no power to the machine at the moment, it's completely unplugged. If you're worried about the cat that I've got crawling all over me, the machine is unplugged, so no need to worry there. It has something called BNR, and BNR stands for beta noise reduction or beta noise reduction depending on uh, how you pronounce beta or beta, beta max or beta max. Beta noise reduction is a is Sony's take on Dolby. So JVC used Dolby noise reduction circuitry in their early VHS decks, their second generation decks. Whereas Sony went their own way and in typical Sony fashion they created their own standard. Their own standard being beta noise reduction. Just making sure I've got nothing underneath there that could get in the way. So let's move this board back out. So that's outwards and upwards. And let's focus on this. So I'm going to take this off. That might actually come up with a boil. We're going to work out why there's so much friction on this. So there is an Allen key that holds this in place. So I'll go and get a suitably sized Allen key. I'll just put this, prop this up out there onto there should do it go and fetch some kind of allen key to get that off uh, let's have a look my selection um, right let's go and find something suitable so I found something that got the magnet assembly off. So that's the almost looks like the drive assembly for this motor. And here we've got the armature, or rather not the armature, the electromagnetic part of the motor, which obviously generates the field to allow the motor to rotate. And this is the spindle which is really stiff so I'm going to drop this down again because I might need to remove that upper head drum so let's get that pulled back out and down back in like so Let's whip it over. Oh, there you go. What is that? Like a watery substance on there. I'm not sure what that's from. Okay. Let's pop it over, pop it down, and let's remove the upper head drum assembly. So move that out of the way. And what I'm wondering or hoping is that this head disc assembly, I might actually be able to get it out of the machine because that's going to be attached, I think, if it follows 
conventional logic that will be attached to, actually, I'll tell you what will be even better is, I've got a large screw here, move that out of the way, and a large screw here. probably going to be more on the underside so I'll get those two out of the way does that yes it does so get out of there let's whip this over again put that back sort of like that for the moment gently does it so you don't want to break anything and pull this out. There will be, I'll get this completely out of the way, there will probably be multi plugs attached to this head assembly. And they're in a really annoying location. So there's one down there, which is for the motor which is very hard to get to from this position. So let's push this back in again. There we are, that's back in. Probably what I will do actually is just screw this upper head drum back on again. So we've determined that we're probably going to need to remove the entire head assembly itself and actually strip it down to work out what's going wrong. I've got a feeling that we may have some bearings in there which have seized, which will probably be the most likely explanation as to why we don't seem to have any form of drum rotation. So with that in mind, if we pull this up we can have a look and see where our snag points are. So we've got a couple of wires here. We have a wire down there uh, how are we going to get this out? Those wires have got to attach somewhere. So let's come back. Let's come up. And we're going to need to follow the loom. So we have all of these going into the head drum assembly, going through here. And they're quite thick, sturdy wires. So I think there are some come terminating up here. This whole thing really needs a good clean, to be honest. And maybe some up here as well. I thought they would have gone via a head amplifier first. Maybe that's not the case. But that is completely seized. Um, I'm actually wondering if I can service it in situ, but I don't think I can. It feels like... It smells like somebody's been in here before with some oil to try and free it off and that doesn't seem to have worked unfortunately which is probably why this machine was put away in the first place um so that 
is definitely going to be the next challenge is we do need to find where these wires go. There's one coming up here, I think. Um, there's going to be one. So I want to say I'll just lower that down. So there's one up here. Uh, there's one set pair going around here. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. I think I'm going to need to spend a bit of time with this off camera just to work out how it goes together. Anyway, so we've diagnosed what the problem is with this machine. We have a failed belt here, potentially, and a failed belt from here to here. We also have a major failure of the head drum, which is the main motor, like a C5 and C7, that serves the rest of the machine, certainly the rest of the mechanicals. Right, going to have to start stripping it down. Anyway, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. So I'm in the process of stripping this down, and the setup is actually quite fascinating because this has four heads you've got what well, i think these are probably going to be those might be two heads they could be a head each i don't know but it could be that you've got four heads going into that would sure make more sense you've got four heads so that's one pair that's another pair going into the head amplifier board here and then you've got four going on to the servo board which is uh, this one so this whole sort of board here is dedicated to capstan servo head switch points etc so yeah it really is absolutely fascinating so there's an awful lot of cable ties to remove and you've got to thread it through this sort of rat's nest of wiring I'm trying not to disturb this too much because I want to keep it as intact as possible to minimise the amount of um, reassembly that I have to do. And yeah, there you go. So that, let's have a look in there. That looks like our head uh, amplifier assembly. So we've got our orange and red there. And we've got our yellow here. So what I should be able to do I'll have to cut this. What I should be able to do is unplug these, thread that back through, and then I've got um, another random pair of wires to try and find out. Well, there you go. Anyway, that's progress so far. I'll speak to you all later. So I've got the head disc and upper drum assembly out, and I'm just in the process of stripping that down. Don't worry, it's not plugged in, but the cats do seem to be absolutely fascinated by this uh, piece of 1980s high technology. That one is now crawling on me. So I got it wrong earlier. This is actually the audio amplification section because you have some very similarly colored cables coming off the back of the audio control heads here and the erase head there. So you've got this little cable here off the erase head and these two, yellow and red, sorry, yellow and uh, blue off the back of the audio head so control and audio and then you've got the main arrays head there so the video amplifier is on this board here and this board lives underneath the um, sorry the tuner module there which yeah, lives underneath of that, and this plugs into the front panel through a uh, large multi-connector and a smaller three-pin connector. Now, what's bizarre about this board is it seems to serve two functions. So, you can see that there is this definite line running down the board, around this delay line. There used to be a backup battery there, so this would have been a backup battery for the timer. And as predicted, it has done a little bit of damage to the circuit. Thankfully, it's on the side which isn't related to the video amp or the preamp section there that you can see. So the head itself plugs into here. And inside of here, 
is where it's quite interesting. You have obviously two cables for the heads. So that's each pair of heads. So you've got a set into there and a set into there. And then you've got these four here, which I assume are sort of almost like amplification. Uh, they're basically little windings. So they're little trans amplification transformers. And then you've got the four pots there for the head. I uh, guess that's for balancing. I don't know. I'm not going to touch them as they were sorted at the factory. And so then you've got one, two, three, four further potentiometers there. Then you've got these two multi connectors here, which connect it to the rest of the machine. So at the moment, I've taken this out as so I'm going to give the uh, dodgy section there a bit of a clean up with some white vinegar. Uh, obviously, keeping everything away from this side. But it really is, um, it really is a thing of packaging, this machine. Everything is very tightly uh, plonked inside of it, because effectively you are doubling up on circuitry and components when you're talking about four heads. But it tells you exactly what those potentiometers do, which is quite handy. But you are doubling up on... Um, head circuitry so for something that is when you actually compare it to a c7 it is physically smaller but a c7 it's quite impressive what they've actually done getting everything into here it weighs a lot it's a good uh sort of 18 to 20 kilograms so it isn't a light machine but it's pretty impressive nonetheless anyway i've started stripping the uh, head assembly down. So these are the cables off of the head. Uh, you have, I'm guessing these, one, yeah, the black and white connectors. They plug into here. This, I'm not sure where that goes, but that does go somewhere. That is... Uh, that's the moisture sensor. This, which is currently trapped there, which I didn't need to undo, but that connects to um, there, which is the... That is a heater element, which actually heats the head up. So if it's coming from the outside, you get a lot of condensation. What it actually does, it engages that to heat the whole head drum assembly. And then you've got the motor section down here. So this is the motor itself and the motor control circuitry, which is, to be honest with you, is probably absolutely fine. So I'm not going to do anything with that. I don't think I need to touch that at all. What I do need to focus on is this shaft assembly here. Now I'm wondering, there's a collar here which locks this shaft into place. You've got these two, um, two little Allen key things holding it in. I'm wondering if they have slipped and the whole thing has slipped downwards, meaning that the head chips are rubbing ever so slightly on the lower drum surface, which could be stopping it from rotating properly. We will soon find out when I put it back together. Incidentally, that's the little battery that came off. So as you can see, it is a little bit, uh, a little bit past its best, and it's leaking a little bit. So it's best to get rid of that. But I'm putting this back together now, so I can put all of this away, and I'm going to focus on this section. Get this section sorted out. Put that back in to here. Wire it all back in again neatly. I'll have to cable tie everything again just to make it neat and then take it from there and see where we go from there. Fit some new belts, see what happens. Anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.